Welcome to the OC Bitches. Welcome to the OC Bitches. <laughs> Today, season three. Season three, episode 14. <gasps> The cliffhanger. Dun, dun, dun. I know, right? Okay, so just so you know, I just want to preface this. Yeah. Ryan Donahue was invited. And because I know our guests want to know, he um, he unfortunately was unavailable, but sends his best. Our guest today is our beloved editor, Matt Ramsey. And he edited this episode. You know, he first joined us in episode um, seven, season one, The Escape or the Tijuana Ep. Oh, and, yeah. you know, he's done Fastlane, Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, and 13 Reasons Why, Looking for Alaska, Homecoming, and City on Fire, which is Josh's new show. Yeah, Josh yep. Schwartz and Stephanie Savage's new show. Yeah. And so I want to start, though, you are here almost um, out of protest. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> because you were You're up just there. going for it. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We just air all dirty laundry out here. But, oh, my gosh. Welcome, by the way. Oh, Matt. Yes, welcome, Matt. Great to see you all. <laughs> we all know, um, because I reread an interview with Josh, that by season three, he said he was burned out that there were some there were some different energy going on um on set and behind the scenes and he that there was some criticism of this of this season but when i asked you if you'd be interested in doing this you said Oh man, I still have some PTSD from editing that show. So i'm really interested to find <laughs> like out why. this episode you mean? Yeah. yeah. This episode in this particular. Episode. It was mostly the last scene. Okay. Which oh. we could wait to get to. Okay, but we can do that. It's a <laughs> It's a lot to unpack. <laughs> I think. Um, no, I told Josh and Stephanie the other day I was coming in and uh, doing this episode, and they were like, not our finest moment. Oh, but, really? But I don't know if... It's funny, looking at it now, I was like, what were we so critical of? Like, I felt especially the second half of this episode was really good. Okay. And, like, interesting. I do have some issues with some of it, but... We can't wait to hear them around all. around the Johnny storyline, but... uh. I think a lot of people had issues with the Johnny storyline, yeah. just in general. I've been listening recently, and I've heard you hear your... how annoyed we are <laughs> <Yes>. with Johnny. <laughs> this mean, is nothing definitely. against Ryan Donahue. No, and, at not, all. not no. Ryan personally. He, he, he is a really good, awesome, lovely human, and yeah. obviously he's doing a really good job with the character because you're not yes. supposed to like think that right he should be with Marissa. Right. You know what I mean? Right. No, there's there's a lot of so obviously you we we watched the episode. Yeah, I guess I I could start with the context of what happened, which is, um, you know, it was season three. This is the one thing that's been like working with Josh and Stephanie again. The thing I'm always reminded of is they're so collaborative. Mm. They're so easygoing. They really give like crew members like, you know, that we hired you to edit. Here's your Wayne. Do it, you know, and then they give notes and stuff, but they don't overmanage people or anything which I just find really great and refreshing. And it it creates a really creative environment, you know, mm -hmm. and I think it's a really great way to work. Um, so, you know, the OC was totally the only show I'd really worked on at that point. Well, I had done Fastlane with Stephanie, but I don't remember where I was going with that beginning. The I guess I'm starting with a positive. PTSD? But yeah, I guess. Oh, but Norman and I had been working together for a really long time. He was my mentor. Uh, at the end of season one, I left and did the mountain pilot with Stephanie. And I think during that time, I like found my own editing style and rhythm and stuff. And then I came back season two and I kind of like wanted to spread my own wings and like Norman was still there and we had our own. I, and I love Norman. Everything like I wouldn't be where I am. He has like a lineage of editors that he is, like, help get promoted and stuff. But I guess the best way to describe it is, like, a kid who went to college and then came home. Mm. Let me show and, you what I can do. And then I was yeah. like, yeah, I felt like I needed to get out and like spread my wings a little. independent, you're like, I'm ready to, yeah. 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 And he was my mentor, and I and I still learned things from him. And, uh, and this episode was a perfect example, because there were a lot of issues with the last scene where Johnny falls. Yeah. Um, editorially and we went and picked up a bunch of shots oh really yeah okay so i don't remember exactly all the shots we picked up but i was just letting my ego get in the way like i don't know it got into it you know it was like a family situation you know where you get in fights with your family mm -hmm. everybody's super close and uh feelings you know, go out the window and you just 
Yeah, are it just got a moment. little weird, I'll say. <laughs> and this was like the peak of it. I don't think Norman would care if I was th- saying any of this, but, uh, you know, it just got like, he was the lead editor and I could hear him through his door like, why don't they just give me that episode and I'll fix it? You know? uh- <laughs> And I was just like, bro, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, this is my thing, you yeah, know? Right. And, yeah, right, uh, yeah. And, but honestly, before that, I would have just brought him in and said, hey, do you have any good ideas? Right. How should we approach this? Mm-hmm. But what was funny was, so we got it to the place where it is at the end. And I thought, like last night, I thought it was going to be a train wreck. And I was like, oh, it's not that bad. Like, he falls. It feels right. Uh-huh. You know, it's it's emotional. And then... At the very end, there's like a close up of a twitching hand. Oh, there is? Am I wrong? That was Ryan's hand. That's Ryan's missing. hand. Oh, reaching out. Yeah. That's Ryan's hand. Like as he's after he's fallen. Yes, that he missed him. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> oh no, not Ryan Donahue. It's Ben McKenzie's, ben McKenzie's hand. hand. Oh, I was like, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> no. No. But it was the actual uh, fall, I feel like. Well, it was the lead up. I think you like, don't see the fall. Right. Right. And I think that was a problem. Also, we couldn't do the fall. Right. I feel like, like we should have. Because it was an, <laughs> I mean, we're 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 starting with this scene because it's Well, it's you the know, biggest scene yeah. of the whole right, episode. Right, right. And yeah. you know, obviously it was the most challenging. And that yes. was built that was obviously there was it was a combination of a real cliff, right? And then or and or it was built on set. That's what was him climbing up definitely was on looked set. fake. Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do we know that it was fake? I was questioning that. I was think, it? I think that um, that was on set. I think climbing. The, the POV of looking down on him. I think that was a set. But then I think there was there must have been a cliff from from Marissa's and and yeah, uh, Caitlin's I think it was POV. Point Dune. Okay. And Doom. And also and Malibu. And also right? him when when Ryan's tr- coming to save him and he's like, yeah. oh, there you are. Go ahead, save me. Look good to Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, I think that was, and you could you couldn't have him too close to an actual cliff, too. I noticed right. that because that there was probably a safety issue there. Right. But I also noticed there was a lot of like the ADR was a bit like all that stuff awkward. And he was yelling <laughs> down at Caitlin. I'm, I'm yep, sure that was, that was, all, was added. all added. Yeah. yeah. And, but I think the added shots too were like, I think Ben and Misha's arrival. And run down the steps. And then I'm sure Ben's run up the path. Because mm. I think he just appeared before. Like, and we were like, How did he get <laughs> How up How did he there? get on top right. of a mountain? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Well, because, and, and, you know, because somebody else said, well, why didn't Johnny just take that? Because he didn't want to. The point was he wanted to rock climb. Right. You know? And actually, I've actually rock climbed. There's a very, very similar cliff to that in Corona del Mar where I, um, rock climbed down or or rappelled down yeah. and climbed it climbed up just yeah. like that and it was about that exact same height and I did it just climbing. Wow. I was, don't really? want to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I would never do it. No, it looks very yeah. scary. Yeah. But I yeah, I was always, you know, watching it I'm like, why is Ryan going to go up to him? Like he hates right. Ryan. You know, she, he was, like, he was he's very jump right because Ryan's there. <laughs> well, he's like, well, and I don't think he. We, I mean, he certainly wasn't trying to jump, but right. I, the, gr- I know, the girls I know. are I... like, the girls are like, come on down. It's like, no, well, tell you him can't... to just sit down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't need him to. I mean, I get that they're saying like, just go with Ryan, but yeah, exactly. He's like, you're the last person I want to see, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If anything, Marissa should have been up there. Right. You know, I hate to like bring a downer to this, but um, you know. Growing up in Orange County. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? What? But I knew a friend of mine in high school. There's an area in Dana Point, which is called the Cove, where people actually went and hung out and would drink. And my t- and two friends, um, they were out there on an afternoon drinking beer. And they came back. And my one friend, he forgot his jacket. And he went back. And we don't know what happened, but he fell and passed away. And oh. then a year later... The friend that was with him felt so bad that he jumped and <gasps> lived. Tried he felt so guilty that he tried to. Oh my he, did God. he jump and at he the lived. same place? Same place. 
But he survived He it. survived, yeah. And so when I read these, I would read these scripts because I'd hear that, oh my gosh, these stories are so outlandish. And I'm like, nah, some of them right. don't even touch what the real stories that I grew up with. Right. So, but I was always pretty shocked when they get something so similar. Right. To, right. to something that myself and my friends went through. Oh, that's awful. That's so, awful. Yeah. But you also bring up a point because even as I was watching this, I'm thinking, oh my God, what all of these children are witnessing. Right. Someone falling and 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 dying, you know, off a cliff. And I'm just like, oh, first of all, all this shit that's already happened and been seen and happened to with Misha and, I mean, Marissa and, and Ryan and now, but they're all witnessing this. And yeah. me, I'm just like, well, they all need trauma therapy. Right. Like, right. that's like immediately where my brain went. But that's like what you're saying, you right. know, is like the, your friend, what he went through with his other friend. And right. That's, it's a real. Yeah. And he, um, and for a year, I think nobody PTSD knew. might yeah. be the theme of this uh, interview yeah. with you, Matt, and <laughs> this episode. It, br- it brought up something that I noticed that I know that Josh and Stephanie always presented this show with a balance of drama and comedy, and they have to balance each other out, or right. otherwise we're taking ourselves too seriously. So, like, literally, Julie is that comedy relief. Julie. Seth, oh my God, I laugh and out Seth, loud. And yeah, to that the stuff seriousness. is so good. Oh my God, there's a few things. I have my notes, and I'm trying to, but, like, there was just some... <laughs> <laughs> some things that he blurted out that I literally was laughing out Baha. loud. Baha. 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 Or he's like, we should take our pants off. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. Do you know what my quote was? I'm like, Adam asks me to do that all the time. He literally what, goes, let's take, take our pants, pants off. off. <laughs> my husband. Like in general, at oh. home every day, he just says, let's take our pants off. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm but a fan sounds, of no pants. I mean. That oh. sounds like an improv from. He said Adam. something else like when you two were yeah. like in his room earlier. I'm trying to. Hey, really you want to get down? You yeah, want to get down? <laughs> I wrote that down too. <laughs> so you all, could you always tell when Adam was improv Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you kept him in a lot, right? Yeah. I mean, those ones were gold. That was I gold. Mean, like yeah. sitting on the bed and then we get, and then like, it's like a pause and he's like, you want to get down? <laughs> That's what I, I remember. It was like, I just, I remember wanting to have fun. Like yes. when I was yeah. editing, when I was cutting, watching it, um, a really good friend of mine, Rick Hubert was the post supervisor and like he and I would like play different songs and try things, which we can get to. He okay. actually had a big... Uh, influence in one of the songs. Well, then let's episode, get to the episode but, because I feel like, yeah, I know we've already kind of talked about, about the, the, end, the big but, ending. Right. right. But uh, let's go back to the beginning. A change of seasons means longer days, better outdoor activities, and more ways to get healthier, including checking in on your health and wellness. With Everly Well, you can take action today by taking one of their at-home lab tests or by adding their vitamins and supplements into your daily routine. Everly Well is digital healthcare designed for you, all at an affordable and transparent price. Here's how it works. Everly Well ships products straight to you with everything you need in one package. To take your at-home lab test, simply collect your sample and use the included prepaid shipping label to mail your test back to a certified lab. Your physician-reviewed results get sent to your phone or device in just days. And you can share the results with your primary care physician and help guide next steps. So tell me, yeah, I've, tell me, (laughs) tell me, I've done the woman's um, uh, hormonal uh, test and I've got that stuff balanced and I've done the food sensitivity test and I've actually cut out a few foods. And it, it is interesting how little things like bloating or, um, you know, just hot flashes go away when you cut out the right things. Mm. Thanks to Everly Well. Yeah. Everly Well also has high quality vitamins and supplements to support your overall health. Choose from a variety of options, including vitamin D3 and omega-3 fish oil. Does this ever happen to you when you're eating something, your tongue gets itchy in the roof of your mouth? Huh. It happens with eggplant. And I was like, am I allergic to eggplant? Do I have a sensitivity to nightshades? Anyway, wow. I did the food sensitivity test. Turns out, I am not. My mouth is just weird. But I did find other things that I could not eat. And it was very easy and very helpful. And for our listeners of the show, Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash OC. That's everlywell.com slash OC for 20% off your next at-home lab test. Today's episode is brought to you by Honey Love. Ladies, let's talk about shapewear. We all know most shapewear makes you feel like you're suffocating. That sexy dress in the back of your closet is so freaking cute. But the thought of having your insides squished by your shapewear, it's just not worth it. That's why Honey Love spent years researching and developing effective shapewear that's actually comfortable. 
Overly tight, cheap, and sticky fabrics that roll up are a thing of the past. Thanks to Honey Love, you can finally feel confident and comfortable in your favorite outfits. And we have an exclusive deal for our listeners. For a limited time only, you can get Honey Love's best deal they offer. Get 20% off your entire order with the code OC at honeylove.com. If you are looking for sculpting and smoothing from stomach to thigh, I'd recommend their Super Power Short. You don't have to worry about it ever rolling down. And this piece is also a booty lifter. That's right. Boost bands on the back of the thigh give your bottom amazing shape. It's clear I am a big fan of the Super Power Short. Yes, it has a little opening for peeing, which is great for me. It's also really cute. So I've said this before. I'll say it again. When the dress comes off, you have a witness. You look good. (laughs) It's the best idea ever. Honey Love has more than just sculpt wear. They have incredibly comfortable bras, tanks, leggings, for everyday support. I do live in all kinds of like leggings and activewear for like primarily I live in that because I always want to be ready to like work out or just move. <laughs> Any the drop of the dime and yeah. like, eh, drop well, it, give me 20. <laughs> yeah. But but also, and and I love their their bra, but I do love every single other shapewear I've ever worn has rolled down. And for something to actually stay up. When, a, when we're walking down the block and all of a sudden she just starts sprinting ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll Sorry. go with that. But no, but this, it stays in place. That's the best, best endorsement that I can give. Yeah. It just stays. The crossover bra is the most popular bra they have. This bra gives all the support of traditional bras without using any underwires. No more uncomfortable pokes and it's incredibly comfortable too. Honey Love is seriously as beautiful as lingerie. The quality is insane. The details are stunning. And no matter the occasion, you deserve to look and feel your absolute best. Get 20% off at honeylove.com with the code OC. Calling all my honeys. You deserve this. Summer discovers the truth about Seth's pot smoking, while Sandy and Matt encounter an obstacle with their hospital project. Meanwhile, Kirsten and Julie take their matchmaking business a little too far, causing Julie to go into hiding. By the way, I, I fucking love that episode in you with you in your, <laughs> your <laughs> hidden scene. outfit. Okay. <laughs> Marissa finally tells Johnny how she truly feels, and Caitlin wonders which Cooper Johnny really likes. When Johnny and Caitlin head to the beach for some partying and drinking, Johnny loses it and finds himself on the edge of reason and of a 100-foot cliff. Directed by Uncle Mike, Michael Lang. Written by J.J. Philbin. Original air date, February 2nd, 2006. Woohoo! When Goodness gracious. Yes. Okay. Seth and Summer. Well. Seth lied <laughs> about his Brown interview. Yep. He's smoking the pot. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, and then... You know, in this opening scene where Sandy wakes Ryan up, all concerned, I thought it was a little overdramatic. Don't you think Sandy walking in and going, Ryan, where's Seth? Yeah. His alarm was going off and he's not in his bed. It just felt out of character to me. He hasn't They they leave for school early or does he have a spidey sense? I'm sure it's, I, a, let's call it a spidey that's sense. That's what I was like. Also, did you notice the door was just like wide open? Yes. The <laughs> and his house? windows yeah. and everything. Yeah. I rewilded it. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently just, it was a hot Sandy night. Just came you know what? In. It was Santa Anna's. He was sleeping <laughs> with the heat. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of those moments. Really, like, huh? When you come in like later, it's yes. like a breakfast. I was like, no. Well, that's my thing on this show. <laughs> do you know how many times? And think about it. It's probably seven in the morning. Right. How many people come fully For dressed sure. and ready, like into the kitchen while they're having breakfast and everything else, just to discuss something that could easily be obviously talked about on the phone. That's another TV thing. Happens right. all the time. Right. But so many people come into this kitchen before school. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of things that happen before school on this show. And you're just like, that. that's not possible. You no. know, we at Melissa's house, her house in high school, my friend uh-huh. Melissa that Matt works with, her house was like that, though. We just walked in. And it was kind of the center of our group. Before right. school, though? Well, at 7 a.m.? Maybe. My point maybe. more maybe not. Is, maybe not. Maybe my not. point more is like before school. Nobody's at anybody's house. Before no. school. So since <laughs> since you're here, though, I, I do have to comment. From that scene, when we cut to Seth and Summer, there's a there's a stock shot of um, the ocean and some beautiful dolphins, which is oh, literally right. every day mm-hmm. in, right. in the P- P- Pacific Ocean. Specific. I kept seeing. Specific. Pacific, Pacific Ocean. <laughs> and are you responsible for all those stock shots? Or like, do you have to go through and p- pick it, pull it out? I was trying to figure that out. Because really? I was watching it last night. I was like, I was like, there's some dolphins. Yeah. 
and like, <laughs> do they say Harbor. something? No, it's just, a, I think do the Seth dolphins ref- say something? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's stoned, like, so they might. <laughs> I feel like Seth, like, refers to, like, there's some line at the beginning of that scene where he be. refers to, I just want to, like, mm-hmm. take in nature or something. And I, so I, oh. I thought, I, I'm guessing, I'm totally guessing. I, especially season three, I'm like, what happened? Right. I have, I have a case of the Rachel Bilson. <laughs> I'm like, huh? Well, and then, and then we cut straight to, um, we're at Mount St. Mary. And what's fascinating about where Mount St. Mary is, it's right south of the Getty and near the 405 up on the hill. Right. But you can see the ocean behind her. And it's not because we're not there. We're somewhere else. Oh, we weren't at Mount St. Mary? No. I think that was shot somewhere else. Because that was Because the ocean is literally right there. Because I was like, that? That was somewhere, I feel like it's triggering some kind of memory because we had our dogs on set and there was like photos. Or Redondo or something. I was trying to figure out if we did a visual effect and put the ocean back there. Really? I'm going to have to look at it again. But, it, but I have a memory and, you know, how trustworthy that is. It's when you're sitting on is. the bench. Yes, on the yeah. bench. I think it might have been like either Marina Del Rey, Redondo, something like that. We were like near the water. Right. Be- because Mount St. <laughs> Mary, I don't think you can see the water that close. No, no, no. no. Okay. It was somewhere else. It was yeah. baffling me. No, I was like, is this a different you. location Thanks. or is that a visual effect? I couldn't remember. I, were they even doing, We, you know, we had um, Thomas um, Feichter was oh, yeah. here and yeah. we were talking about how we would have done this and right. it would have been all CGI'd in the, or something nowadays, right? Right. I f- or visual like effect. Near, I pool. feel like some point in season three, we started putting ocean in the back of shots, but I might be completely that making that up. That feels kind of... Early Too for early. the early you 2000s. Might be right. I don't know. I think I Rachel's I right. It's just a different know. location. I do remember being at a location like right. that. So where they brought in a bench and placed it perfectly. Like, yeah. right. <laughs> perfectly <laughs> right here. I was like, where did this bench go? Yeah. <laughs> just plop it in the middle. But this Sorry. is a funny scene where he's explaining. Yeah. She's like, So really, how did it go? Right. And he says, I wooed the lady. And she's like, It was a Sh- guy. Shelly's, Shelly's a guy. A guy. And from that thing, it's like, hmm. Yeah, so obviously the wheels are turning. Right, right. I mean, I feel like Summer would have known right there in that scene. Yeah. Like, dude, you didn't go. What What is happening? But anyway, it plays out a little longer. Right, right. That ending's really funny, too. Adam's just... What does he do? I don't he, remember. He goes, I was laughing. It's just, yeah, because he's just got this... He just like does a diary of. I feel like he's having so monologue. much fun with yeah. this like stone storyline <laughs> that he's just like, eh, whatever, like phoning it in, throwing a few improvs here and there, like just you know. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's really just how funny. how he get how he exits stage left. <laughs> we'll talk. Uh, we'll talk later. Yeah. No. Yeah. But you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So also? the whole time, you know, it's a smaller story point, but storyline in this episode, but you know, everything. And then when Summer finally. Well, she sees him at school coming out of the, out of the office. And so that's when she says, Hey, um, did you hear about the counselor lady? Oh, and first of all, she's like that. He's a, that little bitch. Well, (laughs) you said, you know, you know, teacher, Owen, no ass and little bitch. And I, all I thought was, have you ever cussed in front of a teacher? No, of course not. I did once I got in trouble. <laughs> I called, I was like, I said, whoa, what an asshole. <gasps> I called him an asshole under my breath. And he, he was, was like, what? Go to the room. Yeah, like, you're like, well, case in point, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but Ra- yeah, Rachel, no, um, Summer gets away with calling him a little bitch. <laughs> well, he is a little bitch. <laughs> That's lying. Yes, because of some tractor trailer thing. Yeah, Although that, oh, um, he said something about, he told Ryan he was going to say something about, um, like, oh, what, what was his excuse? Gosh, it was just ridiculous. Was really and then funny. a tractor trail or something or other. And then he, and and Ryan's like, you need to work on that excuse yeah. or something. And he didn't. He actually still came up with it. <laughs> so the, as the story goes on, then Summer brings movies over so she doesn't have to watch, uh, what's the Japanese? Yakuza? What's Yakuza. The, Yakuza films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, She's right. like, no more, and no more like flying, you know. Well, you know, but you know what's interesting? So when when if we jump back to when Seth disappeared and Ryan finds him on the pier, right? And he's like, "Look, I'm just taking in the sunrise," and that that you know, and he's explaining what's going on. But then Ryan says, "You didn't just come down here to buy a bag," and he's like, "Okay, dang, I I wasn't going to smoke anyway." But first of all, who's going to buy pot that first that early right. in the morning? But then he you you see him smoking pot again, right? Actually, out smoking? the window. 
actually, he's out the before yeah. summer comes over for oh, the, yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. the movies. Yeah, so yeah. he is smoking again. Yeah, of course he is. And so this is the big moment. What? For me, musically. Oh. So my buddy Rick, who's a post super, grew up in South Orange County. Okay. And he was like, this is what it was like to live in a kid, like to yeah. live as a kid that time. And he was like, we got to put in Black Flags Wasted. Yeah. Which is a song blasting. Out. It's very intense. It's very intense. but like, I feel like that that's was... the opposite that I could listen to stoned. It would give me a panic attack. So that's what like <laughs> I grew up and I was like, don't you listen to reggae when you spoke? Like, <laughs> what? You know, total stereotype. But he was like, no, in my experience back in the day, it was like, Wait, where you know, did he grew up? Around San Clemente, San, oh, San okay. Juan right Capistrano. There, yeah. yeah. Black Flag, though, was <laughs> this band and uh, <laughs> they're so small. We were like, Alex Patsavas was like, they're never going to agree to this. <laughs> you can't put it in. I was like, me and Rick are just having fun. And we didn't think Josh would like it. Josh was like, this song's awesome. Like, let's go no for way. it. Really? And then I remember Alex was like, you just created the biggest problem for me. And Greg Ginn, who owns, owned SST Records, which is... He started Black Flag and SST Records. It was like this huge Southern California punk movement. And he was like the beginning of it. And the only way he would talk with Alex is via fax. And so he would oh write handwrite on pieces of paper and fax them to her office. Oh my and that's goodness. A, but she got the song cleared. And then they did a cover of it. Uh, this band Pinback did a cover of it on the OC soundtrack. Uh covering ourselves. Yeah, one of the songs on there is Black Flags Wasted. Okay, oh my gosh. And it's great. So I have a question for you because uh -huh. you're talking about music. And I know when we spoke, we had the episode with Alex Posavis. Uh -huh. And she spoke at length about the process of getting music and how she, you know, would, I guess, and Norman explained, and you, you as well, that you, there were lists of songs. But then when you'd pull one that yeah. wasn't always already approved, is that what she's referring to when it creates a problem? Yes. Like now she's got to try and woo them and get them to do it and it maybe it doesn't fit the budget. Is it too expensive? Like what, it, is it all of that? It's all of that. And then there was the added thing of this, this band from this label and this guy had just had a, in the music industry, he just had a reputation of being hard, mm. hard to deal with and kind of weird uh, yeah. and all that, you know. Um, so she didn't think it would ever, he would ever agree to it, but he did. He did. I, Rick, wow. I talked to Rick this morning, actually, and he seems to remember Greg Ginn actually said, oh, I dig that show. Sure, you can use it. <laughs> I don't remember that. I feel like I would be like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> right. I watch this show. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but. Oh my God, well, that's and so I funny. Think, I think with a teen drama like this, you never know if, if some bands are going to say, oh, no, we're too cool for that show. Right. We don't want to be on or some, you know, what what that response right. would be. So, yeah, because like season two, the Arctic Monkeys mm -hmm. came out and we put it, it was I remember it was like the carnival episode. And we put I think it's called Fake Tales of San Francisco in and they denied it. They They hadn't even like released their album yet. And Alex had given us the song and they were like, we don't want to be an OC band. Right. That's what they said. But the song was in the no, episode? We, no, you we, Then we you, had to pull it you and switch it, it out. It. I think we put a Franz Ferdinand song. Mm -hmm. So there was a little bit of that. Well, Arctic Monkeys, maybe you should look at the Killers or some other ones. Seriously, that maybe. yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, I guess they've done all right. I mean, <laughs> I guess they've done all right. Fine. <laughs> Fine. I know I said that comparison. I was like, well, whatever. But all your songs, uh, Melinda, for Julie's character, like all those fun songs we put in, is more in season two, I feel like. Bob Seger. What well, started with Bob <laughs> Seger. That was in a script. Right. And then we just rolled with it and had so much fun with it. And we're throwing ideas out there. And, and it drove Alex crazy because the songs are so expensive. Well, you know? okay, so... And they were funny, though. And, and then, so this is just another detail. Like I said, you know, Alex is there to facilitate and create those relationships and, and, and close the deal. But a lot of these songs come from your... Uh, yours and Norman's feeling about editing and and what or or are they already sometimes in the script? A lot of them were in the script and a lot of, I'd say 90% of it all came from Alex's mixes that mm -hmm. she would mm -hmm. send down mm -hmm. and we were all listening to it and stuff but there yeah. were just these few little like the black flag or the the fun 80s hair metal bands that we would put in for you and stuff. That, <laughs> yeah. You when know. she was with um, um, Lance, 
Remember yeah, the, that's yeah. What it was. When she's doing her porno and all that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was a good time. Right. That was some fun stuff. Ray, I love that Rachel actually doesn't remember because she's like, how fun. I mean, just watching with you, you and I should just watch an episode together. Oh, because I remember nothing. And <laughs> just to as see I your watch reaction. It, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny. We all have that one celeb that is complete hair goals. For me, That's Lily Collins from the hit TV show, Emily in Paris. Her beautiful brown hair under those berets is simply everything. And now my girl Lily and I are both living our best hair lives thanks to Living Proof. Founded by a team of scientists and hair experts, each Living Proof product is formulated to solve the toughest hair problems, not conceal them. Okay, so I've always had fine straight hair. But I've, and also it changes as you get older, I mm-hmm. swear. But I've been doing some things that it's getting healthier and thicker. And I'm shocked, actually. <laughs> I absolutely love the Restore line. It makes my hair feel healthier and more vibrant. The shampoo gently clen- cleanses while reversing any damage you may have from the coloring, the blow dryer, and the curling iron. As the seasons change, so do my hair concerns, but I'm not always sure which products will solve them. So instead of guessing what change I need to make to my routine, I start by taking Living Proof's online quiz, which analyzes your specific hair concerns and styling goals, then uses AI-powered technology to help customize the right hair care routine for you. I have been a huge fan of Living Proof for years. I swear by their no frizz. Like the frizz line is amazing. I have very frizzy hair and it always works. I've traveled with it. It's been tested in many countries and climates. Still works. Living Proof's award-winning formulas are proven to make hair look and feel healthier without sacrificing ingredient integrity. The Living Proof promise ensures that their formulas are free of silicones, harsh sulfates, and parabens. They're cruelty-free, color-safe, and safe for chemically treated hair. Live your best hair life with Living Proof. Visit livingproof.com slash the OC and use code the OC to get 10% off your first purchase. That's livingproof.com slash the OC, code the OC for 10% off your first purchase. Livingproof.com slash the OC, code the OC. But then, but then when you so when when summer does show up to right. Seth's yeah. room, right? With, and save the last we're dance. laughing. I mean, we keep laughing that nobody actually smells it because it's so intense. I know. But he says, "What? It's incense." Doesn't she though? She, she smells. Go, yeah. She. He says it was incense. I was doing yoga and had bad gas. And she goes, <laughs> "Oh yeah, 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 bad gas." That'll always be like, oh, "I'm not going in there." <laughs> he was smart, but save the last dance. I mean, that is a great movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know what else is a great dance movie? What's the one with Antonio Banderas? Take the lead. I haven't seen that. Sorry. Just I haven't gonna seen that. I have made boyfriends watch that in the past. <laughs> and they have the same reaction as Seth to save the last dance. I'm just gonna I'm putting that out there. <laughs> well, it does great feel good. Film. It's like flash dance. You know, there's a yeah. Michael Nuri reference. But when oh, she right. gets into the, you know, when she gets in to Juilliard, it's like, yes. I know. And he's like, and she gets into Juilliard in the end. (laughs) (laughs) Like Adam's whole delivery, I just... He must have been having fun. I know. He was having fun. I mean, it was, we can, we know that people, they're, the cast or some of, that we're having some, and this is also from Josh too, that there was some frustration with some of the scripts and storylines and such, but they're having fun. Yes. Yeah. Totally. And then he's watching the blue screen and he thinks that's amazing. And Summer is like... Were you okay with all that? Hand, the hand on your face. Oh, God. Oh, like, you know, I just knew to expect it all at that point, season three. But yeah, he's obsessed with the blue screen. Then finally, Summer's like, something's up. Finds the pot. Ew. He very easily gives, lets you go, oh, too. You know yeah. what? We did skip a very important scene. <laughs> what? Well, because you did. Well, we didn't skip it. We just didn't finish it yes. when she shows up in the morning because then I interrupted you, but takes him upstairs for the conversation yeah. uh, and confronts him about missing the Brown interview. Yeah. And sure enough, smack, you get a Shazam on the head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I love everything that Summer says. You're in a, da- a downward spiral spiral of deceit. because it's truly but then when he explains you're so cute and everybody loves you and I'm going to be the nerdy um, boyfriend with a mumbling problem and she's like you've always been that it's not going to be new (laughs) right but he says I'm scared and embarrassed and and she definitely understands that yeah which I thought was so sweet, you know, because you can, you can tell when somebody's being honest and truthful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I thought that was a very sweet thing. But then she's like, you are exonerated. But if there's anything else, now's the time. Oh, right. But and he doesn't do doesn't it. Doesn't do it. Nope. So I wonder what's going to happen. I there. wonder. <laughs> we'll find out. I don't, I don't remember. I Let's just, go to Julie. Oh. And oh, the that. dating and the so new company. <laughs> it's so good. So good. Oh, uh, so I Julie just, and Kirsten are discussing new match. Ha- she- every time <laughs> my father comes up on the show, he's referred to as Dr. Roberts. Right. Even you and Kirsten. Dr. Roberts. Dr. Dr. Roberts. Robert. Yeah. You're not like Neil. Neil. It hasn't gotten, it'll get there sooner. Okay. It's later. But I'm just Soon. like, even Kirsten to refer to, and Dr. Roberts, I'm like, it's a little weird. Maybe I, not. I did not remember the matchmaking business. You didn't? At all. It continues. <laughs> well, it continues into season four. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah, Julie takes it to a new level. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's, very, it's very OnlyFans. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. I've been co- trying to convince Melinda to join OnlyFans. <laughs> so, Rachel, uh, she, 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 co- she commented on my anniversary thing. She said, have you told Adam, my husband, about OnlyFans? And my daughter commented back, um, Rachel, excuse me, no, my mom? <laughs> she was like, not my mother. Oh, that's, that's awesome. I was like, well, CG, you should see the paychecks. <laughs> she, she doesn't. Anyway, I feel like Julie Cooper would do really well on OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, no, we, oh, so that's, that's what she thinks I should, or hey, as that Julie, I should as Julie Cooper. Cooper. Character. Yes. And she's right? dressed yeah. in her. I don't know. I don't have an intimate knowledge of OnlyFans. I, I have mean, a basic idea yeah, of what uh, it is, but right. I don't. I don't. We either. don't know enough about it. Either, but <laughs> okay, you just like. But we're, we're we feel like Julie Cooper is the perfect person yes, for it. I agree. Basically, she, our point. she could dress up like the porn identity again. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> oh my uh, the god! The pizza guy. I really think we're onto something here. <laughs> yeah, you owe me a cut though. Okay. <laughs> just kidding so you have this new uh, matchmaking service and that comes in a she, binder it comes in a binder <laughs> I know right it's not an app we're, we're right. still like the yeah, old it's pre-app like, yeah pre-phones pre-dating but, app but she comes in, did they, you invent the dating app the dating kind service of? well I mean you know I don't know I mean there's been dating there were dating services back then it okay. must have been online right I'm sure. We had the internet. Did the internet exist? (laughs) In 2000, whatever that was. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. So they come up with this idea that, you know what, um, even Kirsten helps her come up with this idea that why don't you, you know, recruit him as a client and set him up and he'll pay attention to you. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, Kirsten Cohen, you're so manipulative. (laughs) I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is really cute. You can see. I feel like we haven't had a lot of Kirsten's storyline lately. She yeah. doesn't have a lot to do. She had the heavy, her heavier storyline was earlier. Yeah. Right. And now she's just kind of there to support Julie and, and Sandy. So. Right. I would agree with that. Yeah. 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 But yeah. your storyline is just so fun. Well, she shows up at Dr. Roberts' house. Yeah. And she says, thank you. Or, with the binder. Gracias. <laughs> oh, my God. Gracias. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. I think I wrote that down. You say something else, too. I mean, some of your... And then she, he says, but Dr. Roberts sees right through it. Yeah. And he opens, he's like, oh, look at her. She looks nice. Adult braces. Pear shape. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pear yeah, pear shape. <laughs> yes. I was like, geez, Julie's just for the jugular. She's, she's like, pretty good. She's not playing it cool at no, all. No, not at all. But I was having so much fun. I mean, I really... It looks like it. Yeah. You I can really, tell. Just had so much fun going to work and and doing the character. But like I when bet. you literally go to spy on his date and you're all in your <laughs> she's like <"Ugh." laughs> scarf and your glasses. Well, and I remembered shooting that and really being aware of that the fact that it's physical comedy, it's slapstick, it's right. like Chevy Chase. You know, like where yeah. is it overly done? It where is it too much? And you know, because but I think that's when you have such seriousness going on with Ryan, Marissa, and Johnny, mm-hmm. that Julie, you know, like I said, I base her very much in truth on somebody that I know that was just bigger than life and probably would do the kind of same thing. But there was a little bit of it. I was like, God, that's a little over overacting. But I guess it worked. Oh, my no, God. It, it works great. It fully worked. And yeah. we skipped the, one of my favorite scenes was uh, when she comes back to Kirsten. And it's like, leave the manipulating to me. Oh, oh yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. scene she was yes. gold. <laughs> yeah. I was dying. She goes, oh, by the way, he made his choice. And, she, and <laughs> yeah, Kirsten's like, so oh, mad. right. She goes, yeah, no, it's so-and-so. Right. And and then when she's like, 
And from now on, we do things the Julie Cooper way. Yeah. <laughs> Ed Kirsten goes, be careful, Julie Cooper. Oh, yeah, there was some great... Um, it was so good. It was great. But when you're in that restaurant in disguise and then the Taryn Nipsey, shows up. Taryn shows up and she was like, oh my God, has newborn been taken over by the Taliban? <laughs> Because you have that head scarf on, <laughs> my mouth dropped. I know. Like, oh. Have you been there the whole time? And it was like I just I remember being so giddy that I got to do this little physical yeah. comedy, comedy thing with the, with the, the waiter. waiter. Like, yeah. oh, and oh, how yeah. your face as you're like exiting after you knock over the tray. I was dying. It was so good. It but was also so funny. how she pulls you back, and you're like, oh, you know, yeah. There, there was a, there was you're actually some kind of cool to... like. Oh, this is actually funny. When she goes, I. I was like, hey, she goes, and she grabs me, but my fingernails are on the tablecloth going. (laughs) (laughs) But there were funny little things that you just, that. It's so good. It's It's really good. So good. good. Josh and Stephanie love a good waiter reaction. (laughs) They say, really? The, what's the. Crab and Brie Freelo? Yeah, that guy. Mushroom Lee Crescent? Crab and Brie Freelo. And then in City on Fire, in the pilot episode, there's like um, an actress drinks a champagne and the waiter starts to leave and she grabs a tray, takes another one and then the waiter's reaction is just like, <laughs> and they <laughs> laugh every they single time. They love a great we waiter it. moment. That's they love awesome. a good waiter moment. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, then, so the other scene is when after all this and Neil shows up at the trailer. She's crying. You're cracking open your wine cooler. Hot pockets. Crying. Hot pockets. You're so cute in this scene <laughs> and you're like, I have an extra hot pocket. Like, for your yeah. luck. Yeah, but how's your hot pocket? I know. I just... <laughs> I don't, oh, I I don't remember Julie. the story. I don't remember them as a couple being so cute. I know. Me really either. Nice. I'm yeah. like, yeah. I totally ship these two. No, and I think Michael Denuri did such a wonderful job. But yes. He basically goes, look, you're frustrating. I've known you. You're manipulative. I've known you to stretch the truth. But I... But when I don't see you, I can't stop thinking about you. And so we've never seen that kind of development Mm -hmm. with Julie and a genuine like. we Like she was established with Jimmy. She's like the whole Caleb thing was like, you know, what's going on there? Right. But we've (laughs) never seen this kind of very sweet, it doesn't matter what age you are, you're still just kind of a young teenager in puppy love. Right. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was really sweet. It was really really sweet. And what's with all the like, as soon as you move back into a trailer park, it's like the stereotypes just come. Mm-hmm. She's cooking grits. Mm. First off, it's got to be cheese grits. It has to be cheese grits. One hundred percent. Nope. Gotta Unless you be have like grits. a lot of toppings out. Do you like grits? I do. I love yeah. cheese grits. I, I've tried to make well, and, and a lot of people don't even. It's just a version of polenta, right? It's I guess an Italian true. polenta or something. But I've tried to make stuff like that at home, and it just yeah. never works out. It's it's, it's a skill. So for no, sure. if there's like a good shrimp and grits on a on a menu, I'll get right. it. Right. Mm. Yeah. And then the uh, yeah the Bartles and James. The Bartles and James. But that was that was my you were like I'm years. that was me at <laughs> fifteen. I remember getting stopped. This is back in the day in Newport Beach by the cops in our white Jeep and we had a case of California coolers and they just made us <laughs> pour them out on oh, the side really? of the road. Uh-huh. Yeah, they wouldn't. This is before they, you, you didn't get in trouble for that. They were just making you pour it out. Oh. It was just, I mean, it was basically like, it was still almost like the 70s even though it was the 80s. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. It's a different time now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no cameras on anything. Right. <laughs> but anyway, so that was sweet. So they're going to, they're going to yeah. do it they're gonna do it. They're gonna. They're gonna try it. That's okay. what. That's what hot pockets code for. Hot pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just is, cut that joke. No. <laughs> definitely not cutting that joke, sir. Oh boy. Uh, well, let's go to. Okay, the, let's go to Ben to, and Mar- Marissa and. Oh well. Or, or do you want to talk I about mean, the Ryan, Newport group before we get to the? Oh, the you want to touch yep, on that? Okay. The Matt Ramsey story, right? Yes! Sorry. Of okay. course. Yes. <laughs> okay. Maybe I was saving that for last, Matt. Oh. Save the best for last. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yes, Josh and Stephanie, they love naming their characters after their beloved con- contributors to the show. And the Matt Ramsey on the show is this Matt Ramsey. Here Everyone. he is in Here the flesh. Is. And I'm just as slimy in real life. <laughs> I don't think he's that slimy, actually. Really? I'm kind of, I'm I'm team Matt Ramsey on this episode because I think, I understand that Sandy feels icky about some of this stuff, but it's some, then it's like, get out of the business. Yeah. Right. You know, like, I mean, there's, I mean, it, a lot of times what people feel 
has nothing to do with the with the world. Right. Mm. Feelings aren't facts, you know? It's like, just right. because he feels something doesn't mean, but it's like, I can't, I want this hospital and I want it more than anything. And I don't want him crossing the line when it comes to family and manipulation. And Kirsten's there to say, you know what? You don't know what the real story is. You're making right. this judgment because you're placing it on whether it's prostitution or, or you know, libations or if it's 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 manipulation. But maybe there is like some something common. And I mean, we all know that in this business, a lot of times it doesn't, you don't just get picked because you're the best one. You might get picked because you've worked with somebody before or they know you or it's a right. friend of a friend. That's how stuff works in the real world, doesn't, right. don't you think? Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially in our business. Right. It's a lot of word of mouth and who you know. And- right. Wait a minute. Is what, is, is Mar- Marina Bacarin. Is she in this episode? Yeah. That well, was her? Yeah, it was her. It was very quick. And she's okay, in another episode. Okay, it's okay, coming good. up, but it was very quick. Because I was like, quick. how did I miss that? I know that there was the woman at the <laughs> at bar. At the bar. The that's restaurant. Marina. Yeah. She's, yeah. Oh. She's like fam. Like, I've that, recognized her. That's she's Ben's, Ben's wife. wife. Oh. Did they <laughs> but that's meet? that's not why. They didn't no. meet oh. during this. That's not why we they met. She is. She's a very successful actress. Yeah. Um, I was like, she looks like so, I've seen her in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, she was on Firefly, and she played the... I guess the um, companion slash, I mean, in, in the world of Firefly, she played the um, companion slash, I guess, Well, they, and then worker. she was on Gotham, and I think that's where they met, oh, Ben okay. and her. But on Almost. Firefly, I was her madam. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have all these roles. <laughs> oh, see, <laughs> OnlyFans. Okay. <laughs> There's so, you could do so many characters on there from Nikita. You got Julie Cooper. You have a madam from Firefly. It's dominatrix. I mean, <laughs> good, uh, hello? <laughs> Need we any more? I my characters. <laughs> you could just be your character. I, I, you know what? I have a great idea here. So uh, anyway. Okay, so anyway, sorry. So anyway, so Matt, you know, Sandy wants to call him out. And says, I saw you together. And I said that. And he's like, well, she she contacted me. And actually, right. I think we're going to learn a little bit more about the relationship if I if I remember something. Um, but it's interesting how Sandy's just projecting all that. And and he's like, but where's the line? You know, and, and Kirsten's like, you'll know it. I'm not worried about you crossing it. Right. You'll be fine. You know, I feel like, you know, Sandy was that moral epicenter of the show. Yeah. yeah. But Summer really is that kind of moral epicenter. And then hmm. and that kind of is a good. I'll take it because because then we segue over into our trio or the um, quartet as as uh, Caitlin calls it, more of a uh, oh the square the square right yeah because um, Marissa and Caitlin and Caitlin keeps stirring that pot and she sure does. Well, is there a motivation for this that I missed in an earlier episode that I don't remember for Caitlin? Just being a shit disturber. Yeah. So I came to a That's conclusion. That's what was bumming me out. I was yeah. like, why is she doing why this? Why is she doing like, that? What yeah, is like the going to Ryan and being like, well, you know, you know, yeah. it's just like, <laughs> exactly. and she's 15, and you're just like, what are you doing, dude? Well, and it's an interesting thing that comes up because our first thought is, you know, because the first thing is, is she's going for a surfing lesson with Johnny, right. and she turns around and says, I know that makes you angry. And Marissa's like, look at me, I'm not angry. And then she says, outside of the trailer, can you honestly say you don't have feelings? And she doesn't answer and Johnny shows up and did he hear it or not? Right. And and it turns into... You Johnny know, also surprised to see Marissa at her own home, which I was like, oh, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, why is he hanging out with her, clearly? So we're right. kind of all focused on the fact that Marissa, that Kayla might be right, that Marissa might have feelings for him, that it's, you know, that she's just poking the bear or she's poking Marissa or... She's trying to get back at her, but it gets to the point where Marissa's like, I literally can't wait for you to leave. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be friends with you. Yeah. But then when she says to Ryan, she, she's talking about Caitlin and Ryan's like, is this just about Caitlin? Right. And because he's sensing something and she says, it's just sister stuff. And then we get, and then we all know what goes on later. I finally came to this conclusion that a lot of this stuff is sister stuff. It's not so much because Marissa did make her choice. She is with Ryan. But this, but Caitlin keeps bringing up this stuff that she feels so abandoned and somehow wants to hurt Marissa because at one point she says, the story of my life, um, I like a guy and they all like, and it's like, how many 
last time we saw you, you were like 12 or 11. Right. So oh, right. Many, good point. How many guys yeah. have you been how around? How many like 10-year-olds were like, oh, I want a 16-year-old <laughs> sister. But do you remember when Shailene was like, hi, Ryan, when she was Caitlin? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe There's that's... the one example. And you know what? It ruined her life. Yep. <laughs> that's so funny. So I thought it was, so, you know, when they, they're they sitting on a, I think they're on the pier. And that's a she, great scene. The Baskin Robbins uh, speech. analogy speech. Right. Gold and I'm watching ribbon. that and I'm like, I'm the same as Marissa. I can never make ah. up my mind at Baskin Robbins. <laughs> and I pick one and I'm always, I always regret it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even talking metaphorically. I'm talking literally. I cannot yeah. make a decision on ice cream. I just related to that heavily. She had, I mean, she. it's very mature when she says, look, you couldn't pick your ice cream and then you cried when the, when you picked the one that you wanted. I always picked the one because why, why question it? I loved it. Mm -hmm. Right. And she's like, so? And she's like, I'm just not built that way. And she goes, it's a skill. Learn it. <laughs> Which is so mature. She's so mature. Yeah. For a 15-year-old. But I feel like if you do go to school, you move away from home, you're going to grow up faster. Yeah. Right. I mean, she, it's, I mean, Willa delivers the dial. I mean, I'm just learning that. Like, <laughs> you make the decision, stick well, yeah, with I it. I know. Right. I know. Right. So when you start coveting, like, shiny balls around. <laughs> 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 Only fans on the mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sparkly silver things as well. <laughs> Shiny objects, Cindy? Maybe. <laughs> I, I was just thinking of She's Christmas like ornaments or something. Bell. Sparkly things. But yeah, no, if you're that kind of person who's always looking towards. I mean, we, we've tried to dissect, and I think we do this because it was a frustrating storyline, but we yeah. do it to try and figure out why Marissa, you know, when... You know, when the stuff comes up and, and oh, Caitlin, first of all, goes to Ryan and says, you know, we're now, we're more of a square and Marissa couldn't answer me when I said, you know, right. just your feelings. And he's like, it's none of your business. And Ben did such a great job going, oh, like, when are you going back to school? Right. And she's, she's at a boarding school, so they do have big winter breaks. But he's like, That's crazy. but then he instantly goes to Marissa yeah. and it's like. So she did get to him. She absolutely got to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But that's like with Caitlin, like, I mean, I had brothers. I didn't have sisters growing up. But wouldn't you just be like, Marissa likes Johnny, like while they're yeah. eating their grits or something? Like, right. <laughs> for her to like go to her boyfriend and be like, hey, guess what? I mean, it's so conniving. I, that's the part that like took it too far for me. And I mean, it's extreme for sure. <laughs> right. And this is where we start really disliking Caitlin because right. now she's yeah. this is this is somebody and when and when Marissa finally says I can't wait for you to leave you kind of go oh god this is someone now who is so damaged this yeah. Caitlin and we're going to see the damage and the resentment that somehow she wants to hurt Marissa and it kind of you know it's it's kind of a great setup for what happens in the rest of the show the yeah. rest of the you know right because it's because and then as I was thinking, driving here, I was like, it really is some sister stuff. Because when Ryan says, figure it out, mm -hmm. she writes a letter to Joe. Oh, first of all, Chili, well, Chili giving some <laughs> advice. Chili. <laughs> Ch I love how Chili just randomly, I mean, I, what did I, like, you know, he's just randomly there. Is that good or bad advice? Where he's like, dude, I've never been. Chili, a the voice of reason. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> but, but he, because. Because Johnny's been like, what am I going to do? Right. She doesn't know. But all of a sudden he's like, oh, yeah. I know. You I know. just need the wrong, the right or wrong person to mess everything up. At the right time. So I love the scene where Ryan goes to, I mean, Johnny oh, goes he's, to Ryan. He's got some yeah. bright, shiny things to show up there. I know, seriously. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Ben in this scene and I was like, holy shit. Like, he played this scene so I was so impressed with Ben in this scene. Yeah. Just his face and how subtle and like everything. And I was like, I feel it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, because he has, I mean, all Johnny of, having the balls. Like, what are you doing, bro? Hey, what do you want me to do? Give you give you my blessing. Permission. Yeah, my blessing. And he goes, leave now. Yeah. Which is like there's something, even though he's restraining himself, like right. Ryan's not punching things anymore. But there was something even more like oh, even more like that silent like yeah. oh, you felt it and and so he gets a letter. We don't know what the letter says. Nope. That, that Marissa delivers, but she shows up, 
And Ryan instantly says, so you've picked him. And she's like, no, I'm sorry I ever made you doubt me. Mm-hmm. Right. And and I love, this is some of the best acting from those two because yeah. as an actor, when you read this dialogue, right, you could see, you could have, there could be exclamation marks on it and she could be saying, I'm sorry. Right. Or she could be saying, I'm really sorry. And you have to, you have to work with your partner in the scene. Mm-hmm. And I thought they matched each other beautifully. There wasn't, so no one's trying to defend. It's, it's, she's actually, so it makes it such a real, honest conversation. Yeah. Where she says, this happened and this happened and it threw me for a loop. And he's like, and it's, and he doesn't just forgive her. Right. He says, we can't just snap it and make it go away. And what do you, like, what do you want to do? She's like, let's just start again because it's over. And then when they come back from dinner, it's like, oh, there's a still Seth a silence. Seth all the dump- dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he has the munchies. I guess he yeah. has the munchies. <laughs> yeah. In case you didn't know, he's stoned. <laughs> but Is the, he still stoned at that point? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. That's been we, watching I, Save the Last Dance. Yeah, we, even, we haven't seen the end of no. Save the Last Dance uh-uh. Yeah. No, but they bring the food back. Yeah. And so. Yeah. But the letter to... is also a little bit of a cop out, right? Yeah. Well, because. Oh, so, there's, there's so but much I'm a fan talking. of a letter, though. Yeah. But there's so much talking about, like, does she have feelings? Does she not right, have feelings? Right. And then, right. Then, then we then get an we off don't camera know. letter. Yeah, well, an and off then, camera letter. So the letter <laughs> happens, like, but then we see her show up and right. she says, and so the audience doesn't know. Uh, but so we assume that it's a rejection letter. Right. And, but in the meantime, Johnny's shows up and asks Caitlin to go bonfire and drink tequila with her. Right. And then Ryan and Marissa, we haven't seen them make out in a long time. Uh, yeah, it's true. And it actually somehow she, because I feel like Ryan's like, I'm just not ready to let go of this. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. This is what I, the point I wanted to make that the scene was acted so well. They, they, and she was able to say, yes, I wasn't able to talk to you about Trey. Like we didn't, I'm yeah. so glad right. the writers kept that in there because yeah. it's that, so yeah. important. That doesn't just go away. No. Right. Yeah, I agree. I was happy that was there. Yeah. And and so they end up connecting. And it's the first time we see them really like each other again and start to like make out, hook up, whatever. And you just like, oh yeah. And she's, <laughs> I got to call you back, Caitlin. Yeah. And of course, it's, Johnny, oh, wait, before that, because when we're at the beach and Johnny does pull out the letter. Now, this is a question for you. <laughs> Clearly, we can see some written. I know some people wanted to read this it. this too. <laughs> right? I was like. I was wondering, is he going to read it out loud? Or are they going right. to like pull that a voiceover? Old, you know. Well, and I kept cutting to it and sitting it. Like it was on screen long enough where you were like, I could kind of make out words, but it's so blurry. Yeah. I guess that was a, that must we have been doing. a very specific choice that it didn't matter. She, right. We just know no. that it's rejection by way, the, what yeah. he's at, the way How he's, he's acting. acting. And I guess the benefit of her giving him a letter is you don't know who she's chosen. So when she right. comes over to... Right. You don't know. To right. see Ryan. That was, the, that was good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But so did you feel like you about. missed out by not reading the letter? <laughs> You're like, so I take it all back. I was just critiquing myself because I was like, I was like, is it because it's like the film stock? It's like out of focus? No. No. I, yeah. It was just like, I was confused why I kept cutting to the letter if you couldn't Well, read it. Ba- basically, <laughs> for anybody who's frustrated, it's the, the writers are saying, you don't need to see it. Right. You don't need to know. Okay. It just knows that it's enough to make him <laughs> drink a bottle of right. tequila and go rock climbing. Yeah. I assume it was just like, I'm with Ryan. Yeah. You're a nice guy. <laughs> right. Go back to public school. <laughs> Well, you know, when, when I, and, you know, when he actually declared his love for her, I love you when they yeah. were on the pier. Yeah. And like, that is some. Cringe. It was like. Oh, it, it's cringe. Has that ever happened to you? Have I been set, told it that. I love you. And you're like, oh, no. I mean, there's definitely been cringy yeah. moments in my day. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> uh, and so that cliff was a real cliff near Leo Carrillo Beach State Park, by the way. Oh. How did you, did you just pull that out of your, you're texting with Tom right now? Yeah. Oh, good. It's He's easy. actually oh. texting me right now to tell me who wrote the letter. He's writing something. Oh. So I'll let you guys know what he oh. says. Oh, so I Tom thought it was, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They did not build the set. Yeah. They didn't build oh, it at all. Thing. But he was climbing on, oh, I think there was a lower area. There's a lower one for there. a couple of the yes. POVs. 
Okay. I think that's what they did. Okay. So, yes. So then that's when he says, come on, let's, he starts running up the, the, the cliff and, and Caitlin's like, uh, no, Johnny, don't do that. Oh, no, I love that. She's like, when are we just going to make out? <laughs> yeah. He's like, like, you're pretty forward. good. Talk about, <laughs> there's the shiny balls. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so. Oh, oh and God. there's like, Johnny has a angsty theme through the whole show. There's that song. It's not the Fall crap. at your feet, James Blunt. Okay, James Blunt. Oh. There you go. Is, is, I don't you, think which, James Blunt and think angsty. I guess it's not angsty. Yeah, you're right. Emo. Emo? It's maybe. It's a little, well, he is emo. Oh, he's emo then. So, yeah, I mean, you call emo. it emo. Right. So, you use... <laughs> The, you, using the same uh, using the same song a number of times is a repeated thing throughout this series, correct? Yeah, and uh, we were trying so many things to make that ending work. I mean, it went down. I I wish I had like a list of all the things that we like music, and then Josh was like, "This is kind of on the nose," but there's this James Blunt song falling at your feet, ah. and then I we like played it against the scene. And then I was like, well, why don't we try it like throughout the episode as Johnny's theme? But we never hear the actual falling at your feet until after he falls. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, uh, wow. A little on the nose. I can't believe that I thought the close up of the twitching hand was Johnny. It's like, Johnny, like, yeah. Holding on for like, <laughs> like or no, just like twitching because as he's about, oh, God. Like, I had the most morbid thoughts of, like, So, I wasn't sure if it was the sound of the bottle crashing or the body splatting. Ugh. I'm sorry. There Did is hear, a body. You hear a, the body Whoosh. hit? You hear a... Yeah. It's... what Do you remember if it's the bot? I mean, it's something. I definitely remember we did a lot of work with the sound. And also Oof. the score. Our composer, Rick Marvin, I remember, scored over that song. So he wasn't playing it like along, but he was because it was this weird thing where it was like this heavy emotion was happening. And then there was the tension of Ryan going up there. And it so felt, we were trying to like uh, find this way to make it all work. It felt very complicated in your mix. Like yes, the post mix, the mix sounded like it was complicated. very complicated. Right. And then, um, well, I guess the end of the story that I started with. Yeah. Which was, okay. <laughs> this is, I mean, this is a lesson for. I mean, as you get older, you just learn. It's like, I definitely felt like I let my ego get in the way. You know, Norman's ego probably got in the way a little. Everybody's ego got in the way instead of working on the show to make it the best it could be. And, like, they were working on the recap for the next episode. And Norman found the shot. <laughs> I'll never forget it. He found the shot of, it was like a crane. And it had reset. And, it, and he ran it in reverse and sped it up. And it almost looked like Johnny's POV. Oh, wow. And like, and I saw it. Of and I falling? Just, yeah. Oh, wow. And I just saw, I remember I was like, it, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I messed up. That was my fault. I should have used that shot. And like, you know, he has this vast knowledge of like looking for things like oh, that wow. when it doesn't work. And so it was, it, I thought it was in the recap, but then I watched the recap for the next episode. And it's not in there. Really? So at some point, but I remember I went into his room and I went, I'm sorry, you were right. I should have brought you in. Wow. You know, and then we hugged and became best friends again. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were always best friends. I think it was like, you know, just. Yeah. Uh, you told me you used to fight over songs. Yeah. yeah. I think Norman, Norman brings that one up because I won a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But um, I also think it's like an interesting thing of, you know, when you're on a show for so long. I mean, you as actors must like playing the same part. It's like wanting to spread your wings. Your character's changing. But I almost wonder if like bringing in a new editor would have like given, the, you know, the show some life. Hmm. It, like we bumped up an assistant editor, I think, season three. We went from two editors to three. But it's like we all were so, you know. Yeah. In it. And also Jeff like, Grasnow. Yeah. Was on. Grand's and then out, yeah. Tim. Because I can say, say it now. It. Tim Good. I, I, he just corrected you. Grandzow. Grandzow. See? I just oh, said okay. it. She did it. Grandzow. Right, no, right. you said Grasnow. See? At first. I just did. <laughs> yeah, I did correct her. <laughs> See, I did that because we my Julie said has a date with him oh. on the show. <laughs> and I said it incorrectly on that day too. That's amazing. <laughs> so there's a blooper. Yeah, right. there you go. There's our other blooper. There's but then blooper. who's the um there's another editor, Tim Tim Good. 
Tim Good coming up. I met on Fastlane. Um, he was so I met Stephanie on McGee on Fastlane. Um, I was Norman's assistant editor on the pilot, and then they bumped me up on the series. That was like my first big editing break. And Tim Good was the third editor's assistant. And I was like, that guy's really good. <laughs> and so I stole him when I went to the nice. OC. <laughs> nice. And Tim was Tim actually came with me to the mountain. And was my assistant editor on the Mountain Pilot. And then he got bumped up on the series. Stephanie bumped him up to editor. and the, But the Mountain only lasted like half a season or maybe it was mm-hmm. one full season. And then he came back to the OC. And he came back. Took, um, well, then he he left. Yes. And then he an came back full time um, season four. And he'll be on the podcast. Oh, Tim's coming? Yeah. That's awesome. Because he's got some good stories. He's great. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Uh, he could tell the story. Well, I'll tell it now. He uh, <laughs> accidentally destroyed Josh's iPod. <laughs> season one <laughs> Stephanie gave what? Josh this was like early days of iPods yes and he had all of his music that right show. and, and so to were, Josh that's a very big deal it was a very big deal and they had the song on this iPod and I was like oh whiz kid Tim Good couldn't like get it off that iPod for you and it was Josh was on PC and yeah. we were on Mac and I guess so he had a PC iPod and Tim connected it to his Mac computer and it just fried the whole thing <gasps> How many songs? <laughs> Thousands. I can only imagine how Josh reacted to that. Did he have it backed up to his PC? Because he's like, Josh is the guy. Like, <laughs> he's having a party. The playlist that he has put together and getting it on the speakers and the right song. Like, that is his life. Like, he is so <laughs> committed to that. Yep. So to have all his music shot to shit, is, <laughs> I can only imagine. That's, yeah. That brings me joy. I kept, about. I remember I kept going down to his office to apologize multiple times. <laughs> And he was like, that's fine. Yeah. You know, I'm fine. I'm fine. Don't you have work to do? Yeah. That sounds just like him. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so good. Oh, my gosh. So good. I think that's, that's, so good. The episode, that's the episode. Unless there's anything that you want to um, point out that, um, I mean. Um, they talk about a sale at Paul Frank. Does Paul Frank even exist anymore? Oh, so Paul Frank literally was in Newport. They had yeah. a warehouse in uh, Newport right. Beach. And they, I got to go down there for a day and shop once. They yeah. invited us. Nice. Oh, and I also felt that it was really cute. Well, cute isn't the right word right now with the scene we're dealing with. But when <laughs> Caitlin's on the phone with Marissa, like she needs help. I yeah. love like the big sister boyfriend role of like, we're coming to get you. I got you. You know, like Ryan yeah. just like yeah. taught. And I was like, I, you know. It was real. Like the there was a part boyfriend. where he's like, is this kid crying wolf? And it yeah. was right. no. And then Ryan just jumps into yeah, and also I did cry at the very end of this episode. Did you? I did. I, You know, it's funny. Like, I felt more like when like Caleb emotional. died, I felt it really sad. But yeah. But it wasn't quite sad at this one. Yeah. I don't know why. I think it was like the... It, the, it'll, the, the, hand. the trembling <laughs> hand Maybe that I that thought was, was Johnny. You were just scared. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it was like so intense because I thought it was his hand. <laughs> oh, and I lost it. I think Josh told me that... So it... Like bands would like we would use songs from bands on the show, and then they they would defer their money for a little ad that would pop up. And I I think he said like this episode ended, and then it was like music from the band Rock Hills Kid. Oh gosh! I mean, he was oh. like, it ended abruptly, and there was right. no we didn't have it was like that's the end of it. Right. And then and, and then, then it was very quickly ad goes brought up. to you by yeah. Rock Hills Kid. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> it was god. Like, Oh, <laughs> we should have rearranged the oh, wow. of those cards. But, yeah. uh, Whoops. Yeah. Well, this is definitely goes down as one of the more memorable episodes. Yeah. And the thank you for coming. We have some voicemails. Yeah, we have oh. two so, voicemails. And there will be some spoiler alerts, or there is a spoiler alert. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Mindy. Just wanted to start out by saying how much I love you too. And I love that you've gone back in time to watch all these episodes. I feel like season four, you know, things ended. It was brought pretty full circle and concluded nicely, but I wish it had gone on past four seasons now if only so this podcast can go on forever and never end. It it really, you know, it, it just makes me so happy Aww. getting to hang out with you both week after week <laughs> and discuss the OC. So I have two questions for the cliffhanger for this episode. Um, I guess they're kind of Josh Schwartz questions, but would definitely be curious if either of you know the answer. So obviously we know Johnny doesn't survive his fall. Um, I definitely had my issues with his character, uh, but he's still only a teenager and it was all very tragic. Just a young person dying with their future ahead of them still. You know, whether or not that included a 
a future with surfing. I feel like he would have eventually figured himself out, hopefully far away from Ryan and Marissa, but still. (laughs) So my question is, did Josh always intend for Johnny's arc to end this way with his death? Or was there any influence from fans that led to him killing him off versus being put on a bus, quote unquote, like we've seen happen with Lindsay and Alex and Luke, Oliver, et cetera? I ask because I just wonder if Josh read earlier on that fans weren't really feeling him. I used to lurk the television without pity message boards. And while they (laughs) could be hilarious, I also 100% blame that portion of the fan base for another untimely death soon to come with Marissa, which leads into my second question. When this episode was written with... um, you know, with Johnny being so young and dying tragically in this episode, did Josh already know he was also going to kill off Marissa in the season finale? I'm just wondering if in Josh's mind, like he saw Johnny and Marissa as, you know, this end game in the afterlife. Was that already known at this point that Marissa would eventually die a few months later? Or was that decided after this episode was already, uh, you know, shot and finalized? (laughs) And another reason I ask is just because of Johnny's death. It really plays up how, you know, Ryan Atwood doesn't save the day here. And we know the same eventually will happen for him in the season finale with Marissa. And even if you don't know Josh's answer, I would love to hear both of your thoughts just on all that too. So thank you so much. Um, Yeah, just would love to know your thoughts on, you know, Johnny, Marissa, and kind of all that. Thank you. Thank you for your questions and supporting us. And coming along for the ride. And uh, so, you know, we usually don't have the answers to these questions, shockingly. I text Josh Schwartz. um, I was literally texting him as I was listening to your question. The first one about Johnny, I said, did you kill Johnny off because fans hated him or was he always going to die? Josh Schwartz's response, that I do not recall. (laughs) So (laughs) that's the answer to that one. We have no answer. Uh, and then I asked him if he always knew that Marissa was going to die at the end of season three. His text back, no. Okay. So here's, I'm just going to give you my two cents because yeah. I always have some. <laughs> I've got more than two. <laughs> but the one thing that we do know is that Josh and Stephanie have said that they're always going, looking for things to make it hard for Ryan and Marissa. So this being like, how 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 do we, we know that their future after this, I do remember this, is not good. So mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I would think that this is a great way to, um, you know, death in, in television is a very powerful thing because right. you want, you create storyline for these, for your lead characters. Right. They're in an interview that I reread that yeah. Alan, Alan, Adam, or Adam, Josh did with Alan Seppenwall. He said um, that, by during season three that the writers at some point looked at each other and were like, this is not the Johnny Chili story. We need to start servicing our lead characters a little bit more. Huh. Right. So there is, so I'm sure that um, they did. So I'm sure uh, doing something so extreme like this yeah. is to serve your lead characters. Do you remember anything behind the scenes Yeah, do you like remember that? hearing any rumbles of... I don't. And uh, I mean, one thing about the editing room is it's kind of like therapy. People do come in and like right and let it all out. And it's kind of a cone of silence where we don't we don't divulge the secrets. OK, but there was no secret from this one. I don't I don't remember okay. that conversation. It isn't. It did make me wonder at the end of the episode, like, why couldn't like they kind of live in different areas yeah, we he never didn't met have him before. To die. I mean, no. it's definitely, yeah, tragic. And then, like what you were saying, like for the cast. Oh uh, God, yeah. I mean, the characters the to see yeah, that. Yeah. I don't remember what happens after, like the next episode. I'm like, I know. Is it just a one-off, and then they're just on about, you know, they go about their normal lives right. yeah, I'm and so forget curious. about Johnny. I do remember television without pity being a a thing at that time. Right. And Josh was obsessed with (laughs) but i don't think he i don't think he would let it influence right where he wanted to take the story maybe he did there was a version of the show at this in in season three there was a version of the show not coming back so in that respect it's like let's go out with something really serious yeah because they didn't know so that kind of plays into it too Mm -hmm. i do remember i think the original 
ending of season three too, there was water involved. Like the Land Rover went into the water. Oh, oof, ooh, interesting. And it's then, got chills all over my body. There's no, yeah. that's my biggest fear. Ooh. And there was another show. It, I can't. It might have been um one was One Tree Hill on it. Yeah. yeah. I think One Tree Hill had a just by randomly luck, had a, almost the exact same finale wow. written. What? Yeah. It was really weird. Oh, wow. And was so, it one of their main characters? I don't think anybody died, but oh, there was like a like cliffhanger where it went in the water and you don't know what <laughs> happens. Yeah. Oh. Or something. Oh. Oh. I have the same fear. Whenever I'm like up north on the PCH. Oh, in, in oh. Like, sir. I have no, no. everyone in my family is at my finger. Like, oh, my I'm God. Like, no, I can't do this. it. Or going over the bridge, like, you know, in San Diego, like that bridge that takes you... Do you know what I'm talking to, about? Um, I almost have a panic attack anytime I'm on there and you're yeah. going over the ocean and you're on like a little... To oh. Coronado? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, I'm fine totally. driving, but other people driving that like, yeah, gives me vertigo. I wonder really? if it's like when you get older, because like when I was yeah, young, I was like, no, whatever. Totally. Me I'm too. I'm not going anywhere. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't like it. We have another voicemail. Sorry. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Mindy. My name is Maya and I'm a huge fan. The OC has been the one constant in my life. I have watched it up and down many, many times. And thank you so much for doing this podcast. My question for this episode is, aren't you also getting quite sick of Marissa's pattern of always doing the thing of being in a happy relationship with Ryan and then Oliver, then Trey and now Johnny, like just getting involved with these other guys. I'm just wondering if you also feel like that this storyline has kind of come to an end. It's been exhausted. Um, and this is just a pattern that Marissa keeps repeating. I'd like to know your thoughts on this and whether you also think that the writers kind of exhausted themselves at this point with this similar storyline of her going off, giving out the vibes to other guys, whether she means to or not. I look forward to hearing your answers. Thank you, Maya. Well, I think you keep you're, you're preaching to the choir here because we talk about this a lot. Well, and and I think um, that's what Josh has said. He's like, what else? What more can we do to this character? Right. And but and, we get so frustrated because we see it repeatedly. How Marissa takes in, you know, the wounded bird, and yeah. I'm sorry, gives off mixed messages, even though it's unintentional. Like she's very naive. Well, and Caitlin put it. Clearly, she's basically telling her, you're looking at all the ice cream. Like, it's still yeah, yeah, yeah. shiny right. balls, shiny balls. <laughs> no, and then Volchek comes. Right. Has he happened yet? That's or quite a shiny ball, if I do say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a full-on ornament. <laughs> that's a tree topper. That's a tree topper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I think it's also the nature of what TV was back then. It's however many episodes they had to run through. Yeah, 27, made, 24, 23. Right. Like, we were doing a lot. So just the two seasons would be five seasons now or something, right? Well, I mean, yeah. Our, sure our, our last season was only before, 16, but, so it worked out to right. about 92 episodes. Right. That's a, you know, and you're going at such a fast pace, mm -hmm. you maybe don't have time to... Burnout, it was real. Yeah. Yeah. For, for a lot of people. For sure. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's very frustrating to see Marissa repeat the same pattern. Yeah. I, I get frustrated. Yeah, I do. I'm very vocal about it. But no, that's why it was refreshing to have um, Caitlin come in and yes. kind of point it out and say, but see, the other thing is it's so, you know, and, you know, even Seth doing his thing is, you know, I can't believe he's smoking pot. And it's like, he's a teen, some teenagers have to go through these things. Yeah. To oh, yeah. Figure I out was life. so grateful to go through a lot of it as a teenager. Yeah. Because then yeah. you don't care to do it. Like then once it's OC was successful, I didn't care to like. Be, you know, well, right. I love crazy. This, there is that one line where he's like, <laughs> "She was uh, summer was over it by by sophomore year." She and she thinks it's silly and juvenile. Like she, yeah. like they they put that that disclaimer think, in there, yeah, because you know she was just a few years before she was kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, she's like over. She's it. already out, outgrown <laughs> it. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, I see what you're saying about Caitlin, though. It just finally clicked. Everybody's frustration. She yeah. is what Caitlin was saying to her. About Baskin Robbins. That's basically That's the fans talking to Josh and Josh right. putting it in her nah. mouth. Or JJ Philbin in this case, but right. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank like you that. for those voicemails. Thank ladies. you. Um, thank and you, Matt Ramsey. Matt, thank oh, you. The famous Matt Ramsey. <laughs> That's right. 
I, wait, I got to point out something. Yes. What? Rachel had one of the funniest lines on the podcast. It just popped in my head. I don't know, remember. What? And it blew right by everyone. <laughs> what? But I don't remember who the guest was, but you said something like, well, it's not cheating if you use a condom. Ah! And people just <laughs> continued talking. That would have been, yeah, because I don't listen. And I like, <laughs> I was driving to work and like water <laughs> spit out of my mouth. <laughs> and, the, and the conversation just never stopped. No one laughed. So I'm giving you. Thanks, High five. Thanks, thanks for the solid. props. <laughs> oh, God. That's cheating if you use Mom, a Mom, I'm sorry. It's <laughs> <laughs> laughing that Matt, like the lone person that caught. <laughs> I was just like, <sighs> and I was listening, but I felt like I could almost hear you going. <laughs> Guys, anyone? That was gold. Anyone? That was gold. <laughs> <laughs> I was gold. You're still talking about uh, the plot. Yeah, like, <laughs> hello. I know. I Sometimes I have those random interjections, and uh, I'm used to them just. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, everyone has to listen to the theme song for Rachel's podcast, Broad Ideas. Oh. It's hysterical. <laughs> and, that's, and it just describes what her, her little uh, mind, her big mind. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, well, but I do miss opportunities <laughs> when you go back and listen. I'm like, dang. <laughs> I was in my own world. Like, well, I don't remember. The guest missed it, too. I don't remember who the guest was. Yeah, it might have been a I want to go back. Episode. And I want to. If it was Cassidy, I'm definitely going to break his balls over it. <laughs> Shiny, sure. sparkly, silver That's balls. That's right. Silver balls. <laughs> silver balls. Silver balls. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Follow, rate, and review. Welcome to the OC Bitches, wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you like to watch us, check it out on YouTube. <laughs> Bye, bitches. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to start with the pilot episode and catch all of our episode recaps.